Does race matter in fantasy adaptations? <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm going to put my hair for this one. Jesus. Okay. So, I want to make a, a response to a recent discussion video that Bookborn made on her channel. And I'll link that down below because I think it was a great um, sort of entry uh, to the table of this very controversial topic that has been swirling around the fantasy book slash media community for a while now and there are sides on every position and there are people who stand firm on those sides and it's 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 I think it's very important that we have these sort of conversations. I tried to wait for a while and I looked around to see if anybody was engaging um, with this video because I think it's extremely important. And I was, I do have to say, I was kind of disappointed that um, nobody necessarily um, took the baton that Bookborn kind of started with and, and ran with it. So I say, why not me? Um, at this point, uh, I guess like, I think it's very important. So first and foremost, if you haven't watched Bookborn's video on this topic yet, please watch that first because I think it's important to have some context before um, sort of taking in my response to that video. Um, but once you watch it, then come back because um, I want to sort of exp respond to sort of a few points that she's made and expand the conversation and hopefully continue the dialogue for this very important subject that we keep running into because this this really if we if we're being honest this isn't going anywhere anytime soon um the the genre is only getting bigger with the amount of adaptations that we're getting um with with how diverse um the community and the material um is getting um so the floodgates are open and you know when that happens usually that means that there's pushback uh, naturally towards that because people don't like change. Um, people don't like to lose the essence of what once was, um, which is perfectly understandable. Um, so I think it's important to talk about all of that. And hopefully we can continue to talk about those things um, in a healthy manner. So uh, let's. I'm gonna start off by sort of going into exactly what Bookborn talked about in her video. She sort of broke her video down into certain categories and backing those um, statements that she made from research um, that she's done. And you can tell by her video, she's done some pretty extensive research on this topic, which is always great. Um, <laughs> as the closest we can get to sort of a, a fact-based foundation. For this discussion, the better, I think, because a lot of us have a lot of feelings, um, but that uh, doesn't really go anywhere uh, unless we're able to sort of meet eye to eye and concede on certain points. So she she breaks her video down into, you know, going into the characters and the importance of, of diversity in characters, um, both either new characters or existing characters that will go through a race exchange or swap, um, which I will definitely get to. Um, and, and she also uh, speaks about authorial intent as well, uh, which is very, very interesting. So I can't wait to get to that. And then she also offers her own, uh, you know, criticism towards when it may not be necessary or when it's clear that um, there could be issues with a certain change depending on uh, the context and depending on the material in the story, especially if it's a pre-existing uh, book or a pre-existing world and adaptation. So getting into all that is is what I'm here to do. So let's get started. So the first topic I would like to discuss um, when it comes to this video is the uh, first point that's brought up, which is, uh, first of all, realizing and understanding that race and diversity 
in fantasy adaptations does matter. Uh, I think we have to, I think you have to sort of um, at least approach that thesis in good faith in order to even engage with this topic. If you don't, then it's just going to be two people shouting back and forth. So um, I think if you acknowledge that race and diversity in fantasy adaptations does matter, then I think you also have the next logical step to that is understanding the importance of that and the effect it has on said audience. Um, so I think Bookborn, the first point that she brings up is very important, and I agree 100%. Um, well, the first major point that I agree with is that um, diversity and race and res representation in media in general has an effect on the perception and can have an effect on the self-esteem of the sort of target represented audience um, that it, the sort of the uh, that the material is is focusing on so I think that's an important thing to uh, acknowledge that it does have a tangible effect on the audience on the perception and on self-esteem and she goes a little bit deeper into the self-esteem and sort of how that's been tracked over the years in relation to the amount of representation that a, a BIPOC group gets um, and uh, compared to, you know, counterparts of generally white male um, representation in media and how that affects self-esteem and, and, and how that affects how you know that group is represented uh, in real life in day-to-day -day life so and i think if so a lot of a counter argument could be that if it doesn't because I, I think a lot of people approach that idea or push back against the idea initially because they think internally first i think a lot of people think internally First, it's a natural reaction because it may not have an effect on you. So let's say that um, you are watching a random fantasy show. And it is a majority white cast with maybe one or two uh, BIPOC characters. And those one or two BIPOC characters are um, usually represented as uh, villainous or antagonistic or um, even uh, towards the other way, not very central to the plots or um, expendable uh, or nuisances, whatever uh, derogatory term uh, you want to use or whatever negative trait you want to associate with what's applied to those characters. You may not think that that has an effect on you as a viewer, especially if you are a white viewer. You may not think that that has an effect on you. You may not think that has an effect on how you view um, BIPOC characters or BIPOC people because of what some random fantasy show has done or what the slew of uh, shows have done in the past. That doesn't change your perception of the world. That doesn't have an effect on you. Um, and I think that's fine. And it's perfectly fine to believe that. And it's good to hear that. That you have your own mind. And you're able to, th to think outside of what's projected onto you. But I do think it's important to understand. As, as a, a white person in that position as a viewer. Um, while the sort of representation of other people that may not look like you are uh, put in this box that could be perceived as negative that the general audience may be affected by that on both sides like bookborn touched upon the self-esteem of of that audience of the bipoc audience could um, take a hit or it could be detrimental to that that self-esteem because if you're consuming all of this material and you're only represented as a certain thing um, in that material then um, that could linger 
that could have some sort of effect on the way you view yourself um, in society. And uh, that can have effect on the way you view your peers. Um, that can build a very contentious relationship with um, other ethnicities. Uh, it's just a, a lot of things can stem from that because of the impact that these stories have on our lives. Um, and my, it's, it's funny because just a, a sort of side tangent, because I think this is important. Um, we sort of we praise these uh, sci science fiction fantasy stories for its immersion. I mean, that's one of the top five things that we always uh, tend to point out how immersive the stories feel, how lost we can get into these worlds and actually feel like we're there. Um, we we sort of attribute that to a skill of the author um, or the writers of said show or book. But we detach ourselves from that immersion as soon as it's time to critique the effect or negative effects that may have in our day-to-day -day lives. All of a sudden now that immersion um, or that feeling of being lost or that escape doesn't exist because, oh, it doesn't have an effect on you. Well, first, it's not just about you, the person. We're talking generally here. And if generally that can have a negative effect on both sides, whether it be the people who, is, who are being targeted um, who are being representative in a negative fashion, and the people who are viewing that on screen of those of those BIPOC characters being representative, represented in a negative fashion, and uh, what their perception um, could be of those people in the transitioning into real world. Um, so I think it's important to understand. I mean, we we praise the immersion, so we understand that that immersion exists. We understand how the effect that they can have on our real on our day to day lives. So, because it can have an effect, it can also have a negative effect. Um, if it comes with a positive effect on our daily lives, it comes with a negative as well, and that has to be acknowledged. The second thing I want to touch on that is I, I want to kind of relate that point of the effect that media has on our lives. Um, it's kind of hard to target it with movies, TV shows, video games um, sometimes because those... Those are so uh, scattered. Um, so many different people from all walks of life um, engage with that material, right? There, there's no, I mean, the, the only people that are usually at the forefront now uh, are usually um, white males, um, historically. And that's, that's, of course, that's changing now, but historically, White males are usually at the forefront of those things, and so it's 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 hard to so now change our our frame of reference when we're thinking about the effect that it has on real life because um, the the communities in movies, books, TV shows um, only recently um, had this sort of large public political interaction online um it's it's only recently been building t on that so uh, we're still trying to find our footing on how to in tackle certain topics but an easy comparison to make to how media affects perception and how media affects a group of people is if we sh if we shift the the medium let, let let's shift for a second if we would shift the conversation to music and it's a perfect transition is going right into hip-hop i don't know how many people are rap hip-hop r&b fans but within the hip con within the hip-hop community which the participants and that's the important thing because so the because the participants of books tv video games that are are participating in the creation of that material I, if you are generally white so the conversation and it's and it's just and we're starting to expand now so the conversation is is very muddled we can't necessarily anchor down to something but if we sort of talk about music for a second especially hip-hop the the 
the contributors to that genre are majority black. So the community has a different relationship with consumers in and out. So in the community is generally understood and accepted that certain things you do, certain things you say, the way you present yourself, the way you act, everything that we do as black creatives in hip hop, rap, R&B, affects our perception in the world, good or bad. That's understood across the board. I've never heard anybody even combat that in the hip hop community. That's generally understood because it's true because media has an effect on our real world media draws from our real world so it has an effect on our real world it's cyclical so because in the hip-hop community that's understood you have two choices whether you I either you pivot reflect change the way you represent yourself and your audience or two you embrace it and continue to rail against um, society and establishment I want to touch on that second part because that second part is important because this is already accepted and you have two paths the the second path of embracing that sort of anti-establishment um, anti-society counterculture approach that's accepted in our community because the the effect and the foundation of hip hop is is inundated with um, the position that that black people hold in America. So the rhetoric that's that's used to be anti-establishment, to be counterculture, uh, is purposeful, which is why that second part of uh, embracing the way you're presented is accepted in our community because it's purposeful, because it's supposed to be boisterous, it's supposed to uh, unveil or speak out against um, um, certain things that may be uh, contributing to uh, the uh, position that black people feel they have in America and in the world. So there's a purpose to that position and that rhetoric of, of embracing that perception. That dynamic is unique to hip hop because of its roots, because of its roots, um, because of the effect that it can have in mass and that, that relationship is unique to hip-hop. That does not exist in sci-fi fantasy. And that does not exist in sci-fi fantasy adaptations. So there's no option to embrace this sort of um, counterculture approach. So I want, I, I just want, I, I want to make that sort of distinction there. Uh, because I don't want any part of my response to get lost or muddled. I want to make sure I'm very clear that that, that sort of hip hop, the only difference in hip hop is that what I just pointed out. But other than that, the effect that it has on us, especially the, the effect that it has on our perception in the world is real. And to act like that perception or that effect doesn't exist would be negligent on our part to do so, which is why it's generally understood in our community. That part exists in books, in sci-fi fantasy adaptations. All of that exists. So um, there are there's real effect, um, and we need to be aware of those effects, uh, which is why these things have to be handled with care. Bookborn also had a great quote 
I believe it was media influence our life. It's not a vacuum. I think that's a really good quote, especially when we're talking about young kids, which she does, which she does point out in terms of how impressionable kids are. Um, so it's just the importance of, of exactly what we're feeding them, how people are being re- represented um, is, is extremely important in our society. Um, so I just, I just think, I just wanted to point that out that, uh, it, we have to take age into consideration as well when we're discussing these things. So if you're in the position of disagreeing with media having an effect, um, that's just another reason why you have to sort of look outside of yourself for a second and look at the effect that it could have on the rest of the world. So one aspect I do want to um, sort of, I, I'm not, it's not necessarily offering pushback because um, that sounds weird saying that, but uh, not a subject I do want to touch upon, uh, the point that Bookborn even brought up with other people arguing that they feel that they're being overrun by um, BIPOC characters in media now. Um, even if we look at the numbers and it's still majority um, white male characters or white female characters that are the leads or or represented as the um, lead roles or the forefront of these stories um, and these adaptations, I still I, I do think that it's it's the sort of what may feel like from the outside um, the sudden rate at which we are getting sort of this push for diversity in these uh, stories. So um, it may feel like which which <laughs> it's funny because we kind of we kind of have to acknowledge feelings at certain points because feelings do play a role. Um, so it may feel like. Uh, we're being overrun because of the amount that we're getting right now. Um, and not only the amount that may feel sudden, um, it's also at the forefront of the marketing, of the rollout, um, the commercials, the trailers, the interviews, the sort of the showrunners push and, and their, their sort of uh, mission statement towards a story um, is being acknowledged as, you know, putting diversity at the forefront, making this world reflect uh, or represent um, our world or making it more relatable. And I can understand how um, that could come across towards people who are sort of taken aback by the amount of diversity and the amount of BIPOC characters that are being introduced to these worlds or uh, overtaking a character who was previously white. I can understand um, where that comes from because if, 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 that's, if that's the lead, if that's, if that's the forefront, if that's the lead of, of your project, You have to understand that people are going to question the intent now of this project. They're going to question if there's an underlying agenda behind this project. Um, And they are also going to question if you are considering um, the author in this project of the original material. Um, Bookborn also talks about authorial intent. We're going to touch on that a little bit later. But people then have to question um, the author's role in this adaptation, the intent of the adaptation, um, how much the story and the characters are going to be taken in, into consideration. Um, because it it, it, it it could seem disingenuous. It could. I can, I can definitely see that. It could seem disingenuous if that's the lead. If that's, if that's, if that's the main focus, if that's the mission statement. Of, of the adaptation. The reason why it can seem disingenuous. Because we. I mean. Not only is the goal of a story. Especially. In genre fiction in this case. Not only is the main goal to entertain. But we would like to think at this point. In the progression of genre fiction. Um, 
one of the other main goals alongside entertaining is um, creating the best story it could possibly be. Or adapting the best story you can possibly adapt. Um, and whatever supports that is what should be done. And that should be the main focus. That should be the lead. That should be at the forefront of the marketing and the push. Um, the story and the care that you put in the story and the characters. Um, not necessarily um, checking off how much of this sort of group is represented. How much of this group is represented. How much you want to reflect the real world. Because just because it reflects our real world does not mean that it's going to be a great story. Does that mean that people have to accept it as a good story? Um, it's, I know it's dangerous to use this word, but it could come off as pandering um, if story isn't put at the forefront, not just uh, representation. You know, in a, in, in a perfect world, you wish you could have both, but that's not always the case. And, now, and also, I want to make it clear, whether that pushback is right or wrong morally is an entirely different conversation, but I understand the pushback because I like to think that in at the end, most fans of, especially and we're at the infancy of quality fantasy and science fiction adaptations on the on in the mainstream pop culture space. So uh, I believe that all fans of this material want the stories to be great first and when anything is sort of distracting or taken away from that uh, people are going to uh, flinch so this this is why and i i tend to agree with that which is why i understand that point of maybe the responses you're feeling overrun and and um overpowered um and it's it's just it keeps coming it's keep coming it's all at the forefront but I think the real the real fear comes into the intent of media, but in doing so, which people are, it's fair to be skeptical of that. Let's talk about race swap. So, is there an issue with race swapping? Um, on a surface level, no. Um, it may not be a huge deal, for the most part. And specifically to Bookborn's points in the video, it doesn't necessarily have an impact on the quality of the pre-established character. As long as, <clears throat> there's a caveat to that, to which she does um, address and acknowledge, as long as those traits that the character had uh, isn't essential to... Uh, the story or um, essential to the character's personality or growth throughout the duration of the story. As long as those traits aren't essential to who the character is and um, the role that they play, then generally on a surface level, there is no issue and I understand why it exists. Now, uh, on a deeper level, though, um, underneath the surface, is race swapping an issue? I think it can be for the most part. Um, here's the problem. Usually, what we acknowledge is that a race swap is an attempt to address the disparity of representation in said material, whatever you want to use. That's why race. That's why race swaps exist. Um, and so the acknowledgement is important. Unfortunately, in most cases, the um, the discussion of that disparity of that disparity that's opened with a race swap usually begins and ends in the swap itself. There's no further exploration of the character and the role in the story. It doesn't play a significant role in the characterization. It doesn't have any sort of thematic resonance um, that uh, sort of is dispersed throughout the narrative. Um, it's, it's just a swap. 
Um, a swap is significant. If we want to be honest, um, we can't act as if a swap isn't. When you change the character's race or ethnicity, you change their frame of reference. You change their perspective on the world and the people around them. You change their relationship with the uh, their peers. Uh, there are so many subtle nuances that are changed with that swap. We can't act as if everybody views the world the same all around the world. There may be some overlap, of course. There's always going to be overlap. We're probably all more the same than we are different, generally. Um, if I'm speaking idealistically, at least. However, we cannot act like there are some significant, important distinctions that exist between everybody. That's cultural. There are cultural distinctions that exist that inform who we are as people and how, how we view the world and how we act in the world. Um, and when those distinctions are dismissed, that can be an issue if you want to write a character, if your attempt to write a character is to write a character that uh, seems grounded in reality, that has a semblance of verisimilitude to them, which are you know certain qualities that we look for in characters. Um, especially if, if the context of the character that you're interacting with is a swap. It's not like you're bringing in a, a, a character that doesn't exist into the story. If you do the swap, <laughs> you, we, we have to acknowledge the swap. And that swap has to be an, an intentional. And that intent has to be beyond um, meeting some sort of um, diversity quota or acknowledging the disparity. It has to be beyond that. I know that's important. Trust me. I know it's important. To acknowledge the disparity. But you have to be intentional when you make choices. Uh, from a writing standpoint. You have to be intentional with every choice that you make. And if you're not. Then you leave pitfalls. Then you leave room for what's happening now. Because you, you leave people no choice but to question the intent. If you if you leave it as as shallow as a swap. And you stop there. People have no choice but to make it political. However, what what all what and the people who defend I just and the people who do, who feel like they have to defend the 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 decision for the swap don't only have to lean on questioning that person's morality or questioning whether or not that person's being racist or prejudice or gatekeeping. We can lean on the quality of the character themselves. That's what we can lean on. We can lean on what this swap brought to the character. That's, that's the issue is that the swap should bring something to the character. And so I, it's, it's hard to have these discussions because the only thing we can lean on is a, a person's morality when they question this when they question the swap. That's the only thing we have to lean on. So we're both just shouting at each other. Oh, you're you're viewing it as this. Oh, you're viewing it as that. And now we're both get, engaging in bad faith. And now it's no longer even about the story anymore. It's about your political views. <laughs> so. I do, I do think that a, a race swap, um, for the most part, if I'm looking on a deeper level, because on a surface level, um, it's you understand why it exists, and it's not, it's not necessarily a detriment to the character. But on a deeper level, I think there's a better way to handle it. Um, and I also want to put some onus on the creators as well. That it can't be lazy. The swap can't be lazy. Like you're making the swap for a reason. 
You should you should approach this character with a new point of view. Is it, it just, isn't just like a, a a paint tool that you can use in Photoshop to change the color, or whatever you like. It's not that simple. Nope, go back and you gotta do more work than that. We should demand that. So I, w- I wanted to point that out because a race swap can be a very touchy subject, but I mean, you know. And just to make myself clear, I mean, certain plot elements can feel the same in a story when you're doing a swap, right? Because, I mean, especially if you're you're staying true to the material, certain plot elements have to be the same. I think Bookborn Grid brought up a good point about Nynaeve in the World Time adaptation. <clears throat> now, I've not read the World Time yet. But uh, the character Nynaeve um, is assumed, I believe, to be white. And she is obviously not in the adaptation. Um, she is a BIPOC character. Now, what I will say is this. If the if the way she's portrayed in the book and the way she's portrayed in the show are exactly the same. I can see the pitfalls to doing so. I can see the pitfall, pitfalls. If the change does not offer a new perspective or add to the character in any way, shape, or form, I don't understand the reason for it outside of addressing um, some disparity in representation. Which, And then my next response would be, <clears throat> in a case in which we are adapting a fantasy series that was created a long time ago, where you know representation was not necessarily uh, at the forefront or on the front of uh, a creator's mind. Um, one uh, that I think they may be unfortunate, but I think that has to be accepted. Um, and two, you can introduce characters that are new, that are BIPOC characters um, that don't necessarily have to have all this pre-established context to carry with them through a change if you introduce new characters who are BIPOC. Um, Or the third option, which is always my choice, you do more work. You make make the change um, intentional and you provide more than just the change. But those two characters shouldn't feel the same. If you if you if you want to step on the ledge and make that change, go ahead. Those two, two characters can no longer feel the same because that's if you're trying to make a move that reflects our real world. I don't think that's representative of, of our real world. So, and and I don't think that's representative in our real world in terms of of just being able to swap in and out just like that without any sort of acknowledgement of the the role that this person now plays in this world with any sort of acknowledgement of how that informs their character um yeah that 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 doesn't seem natural at all and that doesn't seem to be the intent so um a character like like Nynaeve that that I think the subject of Nynaeve is interesting because I don't think Nynaeve was a bad character whatsoever I think she was perfectly fine. And I think the actress did wonderful in the role, actually. But I can understand the pushback as well. It seems like the character of Nynaeve, um, it doesn't seem like her, unlike the other example that she she gave of Rand, uh, and how his, um, his appearance plays a role in the story in a significant way, so it's going to be difficult to make that change. doesn't seem like outside of the braid, Nynaeve's um, appearance did not play as as much of a role in the story. Um, But maybe now that you make that change, it should play a role in the story, is my thing. Because if you aren't beholden to the material already, you aren't beholden to 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 the plot and the story and the role that the characters play, you're already embracing change. So her role, the position and how she's viewed in the world and how she views the world should change as well. That's always my thing when I see the the swap. It's like, why? I ask why. Outside of 
you know, of course, addressing the disparity. Why else? Because once we get past, once we get past the political portion, we then have to acknowledge acknowledge the approach from a writing standpoint. Let's not forget that, because that's that's the important that's that's one of the most important aspects. And I think this this carryover is perfectly into my next point, which is that quality over quantity exists within the outcry of representation. That's not said enough. You know, the thing is, we feel as if sometimes that we're so underrepresented that we just we're just clamoring for some sort of representation when we take what we can get. I think sometimes we got to get beyond taking what we can get and start demanding the amount of quality that goes into the writing and the quality that goes into characters that resonate and last um, and sort of stand the test of time and sit with you. You know, it's, it's not just a counter or a ticker that goes up or brownie points that you get for inclusion. Like, no, we want I, I, we want the same sort of um, intentional approach and depth that our counterparts get. That's it. That's what we want, really. The problem is that message, that part of the message gets lost in everything else that comes up and the pushback that we get initially. So we just, so it's just loud voices shouting and voids. And then we just get what we can get in the end. And so I want to make sure that we, we can, or at least me, I will continue to demand quality over quantity above all need the quality first because the quality is what's going to last and the quality is what's going to have a meaning behind it um and the quality is going to uh sort of sift through all the shallow um gimmicky games that exist in in hollywood and media in general um so i just want to make sure we we make sure to keep that in perspective. Bookborn also brings up the question of why people uh, give casting the benefit of the doubt when race is removed. Um, I know she gave an example of Harry Potter and the, the Weasley twins, I believe. Um, I hope I'm getting that correct. Where sorry, the adaptation of the movies changed the height of the twins and changed, uh, moved away from the very clear description that's given in the book in in the novel. Um, and you can even, I don't believe she brought up this point, but you can even go to like how people view Wolverine and how Wolverine is pretty stocky and short, but you got Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine and, and people sort of accept it generally. I know people, there's some pushback, but generally people sort of accept it. Um, and there's not like vitriol towards Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine, even in the beginning. Uh, so not this kind of vitriol. Um, but but also, I, I think we all understand why that exists. Um, race is a very sensitive subject, uh, especially in our country. It's one of, if not the most sensitive subject. Um, and everybody's on eggshells talking about race in general. Um, and your uh, sort of your morality comes into question very easily when race is at, is, is a topic especially when we are having this sort of discussion in a predominantly white sort of sector of entertainment. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a tough, touchy subject for sure. Um, I think it always will be. Um, but I do, I do think that's why people don't give race the benefit of the doubt when the change is made, because there's not a lot of social context associated to how long or short somebody's arms are, or how tall somebody is, or how big somebody's ears are. There is so much social baggage by somebody's, behind somebody's ethnicity in this country, especially if we're talking about as 
I mean, let's just acknowledge, especially if we're talking about somebody who's black. Especially. And we all know why. So, that and that's, that's always going to linger and exist. So, that's always going to come into question uh, when the change is made. Come into question on both sides as well. Because one side who supports a, a race swap or change or casting decision, the person who supports the decision is supporting diversity and inclusion. The person who's against that choice is questioning the intent behind the inclu- inclusion. And so the person is going to fire back and question the intent behind that statement. So we're, you're just engaged. We're always, we're looking for the underlying meaning behind everything that's being said around the conversation of race and diversity. I feel as if the person on the other side is withholding something or there's some sort of underlying agenda that exists in what you say and do on both sides. So it's, it's going to be contentious. How, how we, how we get out of that, um, I, I, I don't have that answer yet, unfortunately. Ironically, she answered her own question um, in a sense with a statement that she made uh, a little bit later, which is that the idea that we can divorce this conversation from any sort of historical context is disingenuous. Um, and she said that. And I think that, that points to um, what I was trying to say about uh, why people don't approach casting choices with the benefit of the doubt when it comes to race. Um, Because social and historical context can't be erased from that. They can't remove themselves from that. So a lot of things come into question. And that sort of context doesn't exist with other sort of physical traits. Also, just to piggyback off of that quote, that the idea that um, the historical context can be removed from this conversation being disingenuous. I agree with that statement. I do, which is why I think that sentiment has to carry over to the approach in writing characters as well. I mean, the idea that you can make a race swap and, and divorce that swap from any sort of historical or social context that exists in our world is ridiculous. Right. That's that's a ridiculous idea, um, which is why swaps are, 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 are so tricky. You're acknowledging two things. You're acknowledging two things. One, that there's a disparity that exists within the diversity of the casting and the story. And two, if it begins and ends at that and you make the swap two, you're acknowledging that you're divorcing any sort of historical or social context that exists in the exchange. That seems weird. And it stands out. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Which is why. the com- If we. That's which is why we can't engage. In this conversation. By divorcing historical context. Because that would be very strange. In doing so. Why would we do that? This conversation exists. Because of our relationship with race um, in American history and world history at large. So why would we then divorce it in the approach to writing characters? That would also seem disingenuous from a creative standpoint. It's tricky. It's a tricky subject. It's tricky. But you understand why it exists because then... But the reason why it exists is because a lot of the prominent characters from these pre-established stories are white. Because they were written at a time where diversity was not necessarily at the forefront. And not a lot of BIPOC people were in positions to even have stories at this scale with these fan bases supporting them. The world was just different. So we're trying to play catch up. So, from a creative standpoint, especially, um, I wouldn't say a creative standpoint, but from, I would say from a marketing and business standpoint, 
you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, you know? So, but yeah, again, I, I think from a creative standpoint, though, you just have to acknowledge it. You have to. And just to make sure I make this clear as well, um, I it's important to separate uh, diversity, the conversation surrounding diversity in media and the conversation surrounding race swapping in uh, pre-established uh, character roles. Um, I think those are two very different conversations with two very different approaches and outcomes. Um, but they, they kind of get mixed in when we when we sort of talk about these things. But I just want to make I just want to make sure to separate the two because I don't want to attribute the same approach to those two things because those are two very different approaches. Um, diversity in media obviously should be addressed, but that doesn't that that doesn't necessarily mean that the result of that needs to be race swapping you know i think those are two different things that we can approach in very different ways i also want to so like for my closing sort of salvo i guess uh in this response video i i want to crystallize arguments on both sides because these things can get really emotional so i want to ground some of the major points in in so in that in that way and that way we can have real conversations about these things because a lot of this stuff gets lost in the sort of shouting back and forth through the internet and uh, certain things can be taken out of context or misconstrued or uh, <laughs> your political positions and ethics can come into question um, with all of that surrounding it. So let's sort of, let's sort of crystallize the arguments on both sides. So on one hand, you know, you, you clearly have a group of people who sort of support and reinforce the push and progression towards diverse diversity media. And specifically in this video, we're discussing science fiction fantasy adaptations um, and the role that that plays, the significance of that and the importance of that, that's that we um, agreed upon and addressed in the beginning of the video. So that's one side sort of. At, at and mostly what it seems like at whatever cost um, outside of a few like I mean, e I mean extremely like blunt just uh, ridiculous nonsense nonsensical moves that that would be made outside of that usually we support right we one side supports the progression towards that because it doesn't affect um, the overall quality of the story on, on at its uh, on its face, and then another side is pushing against that, and I think it's important to crystallize um, the position that this side is standing on, um, because we don't want to sort of have these conversations in bad faith. So this this side, I think, what get lost what's get what gets lost in this conversation is the um, the relationship that a lot of fans have with science fiction and fantasy. I mean, if you look around, and even in our community, when people discuss these stories um, and sort of the emotional or sentimental value that is attached to these stories, I mean, it, it generally comes down to an escape. Um, we latch on. A lot of fans latch on to these stories because they were they were able to detach from the world. You know, they're able to de to detach from whatever was going on in their personal lives and escape into a new fantasy world where those things didn't exist, and 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 they could you know live through the adventure that um, the cast or whoever you were following the story was set out upon. You know, and you can follow that. Um, instead of worrying about all of the, you know, trials and tribulations that comes with living in our world today. So there's an, there's an escapist, there's an, a deep escapist relationship that exists. And, and there's also a sort of progressive sentiment that exists in one area. And those things tend to clash. Um, so I, I want to make sure to address that point. And the second point is, on one hand, I think underlying all this that, that people don't really want to talk about 
um, that much is that sometimes in sort of in doing something that you think is right or doing something that you think is be- is better for the world could have negative effects on other people or people could receive it as being negative uh, towards them. You know, I think there's a lot of... Uh, I think th- there's I think there's a lot of of a feeling of being um attacked on on a on a particular side of a feeling of being overtaken um a feeling of being villainized you know and I think that's important to acknowledge I don't think we should dismiss so I certain feelings we can't dismiss I think we have to acknowledge um, where people are coming from, we have to. We I think we have to understand the frame of reference that people have sometimes before we can start engaging in conversations. It's it's as if I can I I, I, I can see how the media and the movements and the push. In these, I mean, these are media conglomerates, um, Amazon, HBO, all these things. You you can see how the build. So those are giant corporations um, moving in a different direction than what was previously established. They are trying to reestablish these sort of worlds, these worlds, these fantasy worlds, in the way we see them. And I think you. You have to sort of take yourself outside of it for a second and see how people can feel as if there's sort of this meta messaging going on that what pre-existed was bad. However you want to frame that, whatever existed in those things, that was wrong. Of these authors that we love and respect... We love, respect, and we admire, and we hold on to their stories, but they were wrong in their messaging, and that has to change. If I could put myself in another person's shoes, there's so much subtle messaging that goes into that sort of stance. That either that was bad, that was wrong, that can be changed, that wasn't right. And you can feel as if you're attacked and you lash back to defend yourself. It's funny because we love these stories, right? Classics, Lord of the Rings, World of Time, Game of Thrones, all of that. We love these stories. These stories that are rooted in these stories that are rooted in European iconography. And we all love these stories. But we critique the sort of social approach to these stories in their inception. And so we try to make progressive adjustments to what these creators deem as mistakes or um, oversights that were made back then. And so as a fan of that story, you sort of lash back because you feel as if you're being attacked for liking something that is deemed as flawed. But not only flawed, racially flawed. And so you lash back to sort of justify your stance, your position, justify your love in the series, justify your political positions, justifying your more your morality. Like there's a, there's a lot of things that you may feel as if are under attack. By, acknowledge, by the acknowledgement of these large media corporate conglomerates, that there were some uh, oversights and missteps socially in the approach to these classic stories. Immediately that puts into question your love for the story. And there are certain people who accept that and are, are, are embracing a progressive approach and there's some people who 
are um, reeling and, and and feel as if no, and stand for as if no, I. that's not what I feel. That's not what I thought the story was about. So why are you turning it into something that didn't exist? I think so many of the, so much of this is important to think about. And I would love to just have a, a, an open dialogue and discussion with people who agree and disagree. And I'm, it's going to be difficult. I know that would be difficult to do so. I don't even know how many people in the community would even be willing to have that conversation openly and discuss. But this isn't, I, I'm, at least I can only speak for myself. I would never have this conversation to sort of trap people in a position to where I'm questioning the morality. I'm, I'm approaching this conversation in good faith. You know, I really want to have discussions with people who support the sort of uh, the movement of having a more diverse um, cast, having more diverse casting in these classic fantasy stories and people who disagree with it. I'm interested in both because I think the more that we have conversations about these things, the closer we get to some sort of resolution. And that's always important, the most important thing to me, at least. But... I think I'm going to end it there. Um, again, if you made it this far into the video, please go watch Bookborn's initial video on this. It's a great conversation. It's a great uh, conversation starter that's desperately needed in our community. And I'm hoping that it sort of catches a little bit more um, steam as we move forward. But yeah, this, I mean, this has been a, an incredibly interesting conversation i have i have a lot to think about hopefully you guys have a lot to think about because it is important and please engage in the comments below leave me all of your thoughts feelings facts <laughs> and everything in between and i will see you guys later peace